Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode here on European Confessions. The following story that you're going to be listening to, it was sent to me by one of our dear sister. The message that was sent to me, it reads like this. Hello, how are you? Can you please post my own story as anonymous? I never and I never imagined that I'll end up where I am today. So from the outside, it looks like I have it all and everything that a man can ever want. I have it all. Your luxury cars, your designer clothes, enough money to never worry again. But behind the closed doors of my bedroom lies the truth and there is no peace indeed. When they say that there is no peace for the wicked, maybe they will be talking about me. There is no peace even though I have enough money to feed a lot of homeless people in our country. There is a coffin where I sleep. I have to sleep in this coffin each and every night. I can't even go on a vacation and when I go out I have to make sure that before 12 midnight I am supposed to be indoors again because I have to go into that coffin where I have to sleep. It is a constant reminder each and every time when I get into that coffin a constant reminder of the price that I have to pay for all of this wealth. It all began after my life totally fell apart. This was in the year 2018, a very terrible year as a someone who used to be a Christian man. But one thing that I have realized in this life is that we can all sing Kumbaya and say that God is great only when your life is moving in the right direction. The moment that you start to fight with your life and the moment that the moment that you start to fight with your wife and when you see that your life is no longer the same that is when you realize that sometimes it takes more than god to at least make your life to return back to normal my life crumbled and it was the year that i went through a bitter divorce with my wife whom i'll call Nomsa, not a real name my wife of two of 10 years we had been high school sweethearts but over time Things changed, arguments turned into silence, and love turned into resentment. That was when she filed for a divorce. I did not fight it. Maybe a part of me knew it was over long before she did. The divorce was not, uh, wasn't just emotional hell, it was a financial disaster. I had to sell our house to settle the legal fees and the debts that we had accumulated. On top of that, I was ordered to pay a lot of money and on my child support for our two daughters. I had been doing okay with my small business before the divorce, but after the, after the split, things went downhill fast customers stopped coming, deals fell through, and eventually I was now drowning in debt. What I'll do is that each and every month I was relying on those temporary loans that can be offered by your bank. This was an every month thing. I would wait and wait and press and press my banking application until I could have that loan again because that was all that I was surviving on. I was just trying to keep my head above the water, but it felt like life was determined to drag me under. I could not make ends meet. Every day was a reminder of how far I had fallen. My phone would ring constantly with calls from creditors demanding money that I did not have. My car got repossessed and I ended up living in a cramped apartment in Alexandra, a far cry from the life that I once had. I remember sitting in that apartment one night, staring at the walls, wondering how it had all gone so wrong. I felt like a total failure and I was desperate. I needed a way out, but no matter how hard I tried, nothing worked. That was when I heard about these Ugutwala stories. I had heard about this before. This was not the first time, but now I was taking it into heart. Whenever I would come across a post on Facebook about these groups that share your Ugutwala rituals, I would always pray for all of those people that would be in that group. There was this other group. I went into that group and I saw that there were nearly 80,000 people in that group teaching about all things Ugutwal and I started praying for those people because I thought that they were lost. This was before I had divorced my wife but after that I then started to understand that all those 80,000 people or more that were in that group wanting at least to be rich 
through Ugutwala rituals. It was not their fault, but it was because of their circumstances. So that was when I started researching. I made a lot of research and most of the people online, they were calling it witchcraft. But in that moment, if it was witchcraft, I said, I am going to take it all. I do not care. All that I could think about was the money, the chance to get my life back and to at least show Nomsa that she had made a terrible mistake by divorcing me. One night, while Esther was drinking at a local bar, a friend mentioned a name who could help me. He said that the man had a reputation for turning people's lives around, but the help was going to come to me at a cost. He said that you will never want for anything again, but make sure that you know exactly what you are getting into because you will be dealing with some ancestors that can't talk back to you. And at least if you can find anyone, someone who can assist you, if there is anyone who can help you, that might be from Mozambique or anyone that might be from Zim. So that is how I ended up meeting a man who was from Zim, a man who ended up changing my life forever. So at that time, when I met this man who was from Zim, he was just doing some peace jobs around Alexandra. What this man was doing was that he was he was a welder. He would make those steel gates and he would sell them. One would not even think that he was a traditional healer. You wouldn't even believe it if I told you that I had to skip my country illegally, went to Zim with that man. So when I went with that man to Zim, this was after me and my wife, we were no longer talking to each other again. And when I went there, I did not even care at all. That man even said, if it happens that you are supposed to sacrifice anyone, whom do you think that you are going to sacrifice? That was when I said, even if it means that in this Ugutwala rituals that I'm going to be doing, if I have to sacrifice my own ex-wife, I do not even care. So me and him, we then arrived in his village. When we arrived in his village, that was when he took me into one of the mud huts where he does his consultations. When we went there, he then started speaking with me in a raspy voice, but no longer in English. But there was one who was now working as a translator. And I was told that no matter what I was going to do, I had to follow the rules. Otherwise, I was going to be mentally ill, to go mad, to go and eat food from the refuse bags that people would have thrown out. So this is the reason as to why I am so scared. I can't even spend a night not being at my house. These rituals were done. That was when I was told that no matter what, I had to make sure that each and every night I have to be in my house and to buy a coffin when I would have returned back to my country and this coffin I had to place it in one of the rooms where I was not supposed to allow anyone who is not a ritualist like me. So after the rituals were done that was when I returned back to South Africa. At that time this man he did not tell me the truth about the needle that he had given me. He said that the moment that you are going to arrive back into your country I want you to go and spend a night at one of your parents house. So since my my father passed, had passed away many years ago. I then went to my mom's house and I slept there. So I had been given a needle and I was told that this needle, I was supposed to place it underneath the bed that I was going to sleep on. Then in early in the morning, I was supposed to take that needle and I had to go and flush it. So that was what I did. I then placed that needle underneath the bed. Then the next morning, I went to the toilet and I pretended as if I was relieving myself. Then I flushed that needle. Then I returned back to the place where I was staying. My mother, unfortunately, she then got so sick, she was admitted at the hospital. Then she passed away. And after my mom had passed away, that was when I saw my mom. She was like a ghost when I saw her. She was like, my son, why did you kill me? So I could not understand why my mom was accusing me of killing her. I then spoke with that healer again from Zim. And he said that she was the one, indeed, she was the one who 
had to be sacrificed. So from there on, I started making a lot of money. I made so much money, moved out of Alexandra and came to the place where I am staying right now. Made sure that I made some renovations after I had purchased the house. And then I have this other room. And then I have this other room. No one but me is allowed to enter into that room. There is this other woman who is my maid. So she suspects that there are things that do happen in that room. But at least she is doing it for the sake of money. She is from Lesotho. She is the woman who is working for me as a maid. I always give her money and always remind her that when I am not at home, no matter what, she is not supposed to enter into that room because there is a coffin that is in there. Each and every night, it does not matter if I have picked up a lady that I will be with when after we would have made love I always tell her to excuse myself so that I can go into that room what I do is that I'll be pretending as if I am busy working then if I want to sleep with her again I come then we have sexual intercourse then I return back into that room and lock myself in that coffin this is the heavy burden that I have to carry otherwise I might run mad Dear listeners, Ray, there was a message that was sent to me by one of our admins who received this confession. Strange things indeed they do happen in this world.